Hello, it's Richard at Richard's Guitars and um, we're going to have another bash and a bit of learning. Uh, last, time, um, last time we spoke we were looking at the uh, construction of the major scale and we have got this far so we're uh, we've got the major scale. We've learnt how to build it across the, um, the, the, uh, the fretboard and hopefully that's a, that's, you're, you're, you're comfortable with that. What we then looked at was an introduction to chords and we built the C major 7th arpeggio using the root, the 3rd, the 5th and the 7th. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at the second chord in the key which is the D minor 7th but instead of going through every chord and um, I think it's one of those things where you can, once you understand the principle, you can start having a go at this yourself and then I can map out and say, okay, well look, this is, these are the results. But today we're just going to look at the D minor 7th because I want to introduce to you something that's really quite interesting and exciting as well, which is the minor pentatonic. Um, because I'm going to be showing you it in a really quite an interesting way that a lot of you I don't think would have seen before. Mm. Uh, so um, I'm hoping to create a bit of a few sort of question marks and um, it's going to be a short video because I don't have a memory card so I've got to keep all the original footage down to half an hour so I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm, I'm praying I'm going to do this so excuse me if I make any errors right, I won't make errors because I'll edit them out right, here we go so, got to be quick the first thing we're going to look at is okay, we've done the uh, root three five seven from the first note of the scale that gave us our major seventh um, arpeggio so root three five major seven root and hopefully you can see that on there root uh, three five major seventh root if, if you don't understand that have a look at the other videos so what we're going to do now is we're going to start everything from the second note of the scale and this is how we build the chords in the key. We build, in, we build the root 3, 5, 7 from each of the intervals within the scale and that will build us our chords. And I've got some diagrams which I'm going to show you, I'll show you all of them but we're going to be fixing to the, the D today or the second note of the scale. Okay. So what, we, what we're going to end up with is a D minor seventh chord and I'm going to show you how that occurs. Quite simply the root stuff we, we play the play the scale exactly as we did before but our little finger now starts on the, the, the new root so this is our new tonal center so, oops, sorry. so this is our, our new tonal center so we're, we're basically playing a scale within a scale we're going to play from the second note to the second note an octave higher but within the key that we started in which is here. In this case, it's the C major scale. So we're going to play, in this case, because it's a C major scale, we're going to play from D to D, but within the key of C. Or we could say the second tone to the second tone within the key that started a tone below, if you like, from the, from the one here. So we're, in, we're still in a C major scale. So nothing has changed. This is the key. This is, this is a concept you've got to bay, get your head around. Nothing has changed. None of the notes have changed. We are simply building the chord that starts from the second note in the scale. So we now have the root. If we go up two, like one note from there, the two is here now. Now we have a, a minor third. Last time we built up a chord, it was a major third. And it was a major third because the third note in the scale, if we go back to the original scale, we went one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's four frets, that's a major third. But now you can see that when we start from this note, and that's our new one, one, two, three, it drops. So if you can hear it, one, two, three, one, two, three, da, 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 da. There's that happy, that happy third. But then we start on to the second note, when we start on the second note, And that's where we get that kind of um, um, uh, no. Do you remember that's from 
from whatever it was, that film, <laughs> from uh, Mary Pop, not Mary Poppins, uh, Sound of Music again, isn't it? And so, um, um, I've, not, I've not heard that before, I'm just hearing that man. Uh, so what I do, what I, do? I went to... Um, a deer, a female deer, so that's the major third. That's the minor third. So what she was doing there was again another another form of harmonising. Second core tones of the major scale. So we've got root three five. Minus seventh to finish. So if you look at the diagram, you'll see that. So we've got the. So all we're doing is we're we're doing exactly what we were doing before. We're skipping every other note to make our chord tones. Root three, five, and seven again. So that's our minus seven. So if you look at any, in this case, we're playing a C minor seven. So wherever you see a C minor seven chord, so for example, this is a this this I think I may have shown this before, but or mentioned it. Um, there's a common chord shape which you'll see in the diagram. You'll see how there's a whole line of notes that all form, um, and this is one way you can do it. We have a bar with a third finger across here, second finger over the top. So by playing there, we're playing um, a D minor seven. So I say C minor seven. Sorry. So we're playing a D minor seven here, just by playing all the chord tones in a line along here, and that is a very um, well. Let's say, for example, we want to play another D minor. A common, a common, um, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to start having a look around. What chord shapes do you know already? Okay, so you might know this one. So that's a, a regular D minor. So root uh, five. Root and minor third. Okay, so the great thing is, if I know that's root by looking at it, I can see that's a root, five, root, and a minor third. If I know that's a root, I know if I drop that down by a tone, I'm going to get a minor seventh interval in there. So there's my um, uh, D minor seven. this and almost prints it's got those classic chord anyway um don't embarrass yourself rich um okay so we've got the d minor seven so what we're doing is we now know that the first tone of the major scale produces a major seventh chord. The second tone of the major scale, if you build a, a chord from there, a root three, five, and a seven, it will create a minor seventh chord. The two key important tones that make that minor seventh a minor seventh are the new minor third that we've just found instead of the major third, which we've already discussed. Major thirds sound very happy, minor thirds sound very sad, is also the minor seventh. The minor seventh is just one step below a major seventh, but but it's important that for right now we keep it in the context of the the shape that we've been playing in this major scale. Because I want to now show you something really 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 cool, which is going to help you improvise. Because what I want you to do now is I want you to practice your scale, but starting from the D, and I want you to play, if you've got your jam pal, you've got a recording or a backing track, go onto YouTube and put in D minor seven backing track, uh, something like that. Or, um, so just put D minor seven chord vamp or something. Um, so what you really want is something like this. Um, just something simple. So now, our tonal center our tonal center is the D minor okay 
So our chord tones are now root minor third, minor seventh, and fifth. So root, bend up the minor third. That's the minor third. Root, bend up from the fourth or fifth. So, four, fifth to six, minus seventh, back to fifth, I think, hopefully. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense. So, so now you can hear that I'm still playing exactly the same notes. So before, last time we played. Major seventh, this is the first chord in the key. Happy, sickly sweet. So hopefully you can hear how those two, um, those two chords and how by focusing on the chord tones that lie naturally mapped out in that scale shape, by highlighting the chord tones and using the chord tones as our map, it creates a, a new feel and sound to the scale that we're playing. And that is actually an insight into what we call modes. Okay. But I'm not going to talk too much about that, but they are in the diagrams. It's all in the diagrams. And what we were playing there was the Dorian scale. But it sounds scary, but it's not. It's just a phrase that's given to an emphasis. That's the way to think of it. Think of modes as emphasis within the key that you're playing in. So we're playing, it happens to be in the key of C. So if we play from the second note of the scale to the second note of the scale, up an octave higher, that's going to give us Dorian mode. But what you'll hear is it's got a kind of slightly mystical feel about it. It's quite a nice, um, airy kind of feel to it, um, which I really like. Um, but here's what I, this is the piece, piece de resistance, as they say, or whatever it is. <laughs> um, this is the real nugget of information I want to give you today. You've probably or possibly heard of a minor pentatonic scale. What I want you to do with your pen and paper is map out the following intervals within this diag within this shape that we've been playing in over these last few weeks. Trust me, the minor pentatonic is a five note scale. It's used massively in rock, blues and jazz. It's an incredibly important scale that we will be looking at again in the future, but I want to blend it in right now, right now. And the crazy thing is, we're not showing you, or you're not learning the first position minor pentatonic scale here. In fact, it's probably the last one, it's probably called pattern five. Don't worry about what the pattern name is, because you're gonna create it yourself. The minor pentatonic starts with the root. It always starts from the, one of the minor tones in the scale. So we've just found one, that's why we're gonna talk about it right now. This D minor seventh chord is, it's a, it's a minor chord because it starts from the second note in the scale. So second notes in the scale always generate minor scales. Root, minor third, fourth, fifth, and minor seventh. So root, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor seventh. There we go, got it right. Root, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor seventh. The wonderful thing about the pentatonic scale is it gives you all the, flav the key flavours of the minor scale. Root, minor third. Well, we've already talked about the fact that the minor third gives you, the minor or the major third give you the flavour of the scale you're playing. So the minor third is an absolute must. It's got to be in that scale. Absolutely has to be. The fourth. The fourth's okay. It backs up. It's there. It's in the. It's 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 it, it, it has its place. 
the fourth is great because it sounds a little bit out, you bend it up and whack, you're on the fifth. The fifth is a really important sort of backup supporting chord tone. Adds, it's quite often resolved to instead of the root. So the fifth is a cool one to have in. Fourth one's a cool one because you can bend it up to the fifth. And then we have the minor seventh. And the minor seventh is crucial because it's, it's the thing that gives us the, the additional minorness of the minor chord. We, with the minor third gives us the minor thumbs up. Yeah, it's a minor chord. And so does the minor seventh. So, so by having the minor third, we've basically got all your chord tones in there. Root, third, being a minor third. We've got the fifth. We've got the minor seventh. Root, three, five, seven, and we whack in a fourth for good measure. So the minor pentatonic is incredibly important. Minor pentatonic is amazing because from the minor pentatonic, once you've built five notes, you've only got two more notes and you've got the whole scale. So, um, and this is what it's going to look like. And I, the diagram will be right here, but I want to show you this right now because it's so important. So root three, four, five, minor seven. I'm going through it quite quick because I'm running out of time and I can also uh, know that you're going to have a diagram above me anyway. Root again, minor third. Fourth, fifth, minor seventh, root. So it's a really symmetrical looking shape too. You've got two, two, um, two strings of two frets, two strings of three frets, two strings of two frets again. Now once you've got that under your fingertips, that makes playing around with your jam track um, a great um, if, if, if you're a little bit more advanced and you can do this, try playing a D minor seventh to a G. playing with your pentatonic shape, pentatonic scale, and of course I could show you some little licks, but the point is I want you to use your ears, this is the key to it. If you've got uh, some basic rhythm going on in the background, your ears will guide you. Look, if I play through this. minor pentatonic um, is incredibly useful. Once you've got your minor pentatonic down, I can tell you now, we just looked at the, the second, uh, if like, chord in the key, and associated with the second chord in the key is the minor scale associated with it, which we've just done, two to two. The natural six, the natural six is a key fundamental part of the Dorian sound. So, once you've got your root, minor third, fourth, fifth, minor seventh, you immediately know that if you can find your minor seventh, they're there. You just go down one and you've got the sixth. And that sixth makes the whole Dorian feel. So let's have another listen to our backing track. Minor pentatonic. Now I'm going to go down to that minor seventh. All of a sudden, that minor sixth, not sorry, not minor sixth, but that natural sixth, is what creates the mystique out the scale. Can you just hear it? I'm going to go up 
Hi. That's right. What's this? <laughs> minor pentatonic. second note of the scale so that's outside of, and that's our only other missing note the two so I've just put that in there because I, I knew that there was a minor third here and I knew that that's a root here so I know there's a two in the middle and I can bend and that sounds great too twos always sound great against a minor chord so it's a ninth twos become nines and twos sound great so for example if I resolve to the two uh, let me, I'll resolve to the root so that's my sort of quite straightforward minor third to root, minor seven, and now I'm going to bend it. Suspension, suspension, resolution. Result, root, root, uh, resolution again. So it's just pentatonic. Um, so what we've done there is we have, what have we learned there? We've learned that the second note in the scale generates a minor scale within the original major scale if we play from the second note to the second note, okay? That is what we've learned, believe it or not. So we've learned the fact that there are scales within a scale. That's what we're really saying here. There are seven of them. Um, and those, note, those scales are called uh, modes. Uh, they have different flavours and different feels, and we can go through those in the future. But we're kind of looking at the chord construction element of it here. So we're looking at the root, the minor third, the fifth, and the minor seventh. That's made up our second chord tone in the key. But what we also did is we, um, we also learned that there are pentatonic scales within our major scale. And pentatonic scales are five note scales incredibly commonly used all of your rock and blues you hear pentatonic scales every single day but what we've done is we've understood where the pentatonic scale comes from the pentatonic scale is the root the minor third the fourth the fifth and the minor seventh of a minor scale it's as simple as that he says so put your questions in below because really actually it's your questions to, to trouble with the last videos was too many people understood it <laughs> so I didn't really know where to go next. I need you to not understand a bit because then I can focus on an area where you haven't understood and I will do that next. Okay, so uh, yeah, thanks very much and uh, I'll see you in the next one. So if you don't understand anything, don't stress. It's, uh, it's, it's no fun if it's not challenging. Okay, okay, see you soon. Thanks very much, bye.